Welcome to Earth. I'm Matthew Cook. I'll be your host. Please refer to episode one if you're unclear on the rules. This is episode two of your survivor's guide, how to handle freeloaders. Now, nobody likes a freeloader. The husband or wife who drinks all your beer, hangs out all day while you're working. Oh, no, I, because the shower curtain makes a great backdrop. Two more minutes. Oh, it's not like you need to use the bathroom that bad. Sorry, let's go big picture for a second. You are all freeloaders in the worst way. A freeloader is a person who has their goods carried on someone else's truck at no charge. And you've all had a lot of goods carried free for a very long time. You did not invent electricity or satellites or smartphones or the internet communications protocol, but here we are feeling entitled to it after paying a few bucks a month. It cost millions of dollars and lifetimes to develop this technology. And we're not even factoring in the biological engineering at work. You did not write your own DNA nor personally fight your way through a 14 billion year evolutionary obstacle course, winning every single battle all by yourself. So I'd say the amount of free goods you've had delivered to you up until this very moment is incalculable. You're standing on the shoulders of an unimaginably large and ancient universe that created you when apparently continuously chooses to keep your electrons firing in a kind of perpetual motion machine from moment to moment along with everything else that exists, flying along through space-time, all of this entirely at the discretion of an unfathomable oneness fueled by an energy you cannot conceive. And no matter how hard you worked so far today, you can't take credit for any of that. Nor do you deserve to. Nor can you afford to pay for it. Apparently it's on the house. So anyway, you're all freeloaders. And you should stop splitting hairs when someone else's kid smokes a cigarette during public school gym class. I mean, get a life. I was having a hard year, right? Resource hoarders are another thing, and that you really need to watch out for. Like Uncle Sam, making a killing on the sales tax off the t-shirts you guys are buying from my website to support this series. Taxes that are eating into the money that I need for my student loans that I'm still paying off at 46 years old. Which is really strange because America is the wealthiest country on the planet. And yet 40 million people are in poverty. Nearly half the country can't afford rent and don't have any extra cash on hand. Which is surprising because most Americans work harder, longer hours for less benefits than any other developed country on the planet. And America has the most money. It's just kept out of your hands. In your country, a CEO makes 20 times the salary of their average worker. That was just the 1950s. Last year, the CEO of a major company made 361 times their average employee. Since the 70s, CEO compensation's gone up 940% compared to 12% for their employees. And this is just a rolling snowball getting bigger, because big companies consolidate and stifle competition by nature. And you now live in an economy filled with mostly big companies, which is the result of the efforts of American consumers and workers. That's why half the country is either in or near poverty. You don't, look, you don't have a lot of time. You get maybe eight decades total on average. And the first two are shot, just learning the basics. And the last two, well, that's a wash. You're just finishing up. Maybe you pull a rabbit out of a hat last minute. So safe side, you've got four, four decades to make a contribution. Now, just collecting a bunch of stuff that only matters for maybe one of those decades is probably not a good use of resources. Humans are unlike any other animal in that you're social. You have to teach each other everything. In this world, you are on the top of the food chain. And that means nobody else needs you for food. Nobody needs you at all. Except you guys. The Earth doesn't need you. It doesn't care at all. The Earth did fine for 180 million years with big lizards wandering around. 180 million years. Just right down the drain from a little asteroid. Human beings have only been here maybe 150,000 years. And you might not make it that much longer. You're gonna need to divide and conquer. Some of you have to grow the food, some of you build the buildings, some of you make the cheese, some of you make the pizza. Some are gonna write the songs, others are gonna make steel and cars until there's too much traffic, too many injuries, and a climate crisis. And now some of you need to invent new forms of transportation. 
Is it just so three players can hoard all the rewards and become the all-time world champion freeloaders on the backs of a very productive workforce? There's a small, tiny group of Americans who own and control pretty much everything and exploit the hell out of the country that made them rich and continues to make them ever richer. This tiny group encourages the rest of the players, particularly the white ones, to think that the non-white ones are the real freeloaders, and this has been a very effective strategy for about 400 years. But people seem to be waking up to it. Human rights activists fought very hard and eventually made some headway, but it stopped short when one extraordinary player got a little too close to telling everybody how to win the game. The economic problem is probably the most serious problem confronting poor people generally. And I don't want to be narrow about this, talking only about the black poor in our country, because I must be concerned about Puerto Ricans who are poor, Mexican Americans, American Indians, and Appalachian whites. And I think the time has come to bring to bear the power of the direct action, the nonviolent direct action movement on the basic economic conditions that we face all over the country. Dr. King was talking about giving the wealth of this nation to its citizens in the form of food, housing, education, and some players are talking about that again right now. And they aren't worried about who's going to pay for it because they know you're the richest country on earth. You can afford it. Not you personally, but the wealth you collectively inherited and continue to create in this country. It's the same with healthcare. Many of you are realizing that investing in a healthy society helps the entire species, not just because you believe taking care of one another is the meaning of life and good karma and maybe follows in the footsteps of team leaders like Jesus and Muhammad and Moses, but also that the science bears this out. A healthier, smarter, less stressed out society gains two IQ points meaning a country of smarter people. And that means a safer, more secure and stable country, certainly better leaders. Remember, you've only got four decades and odds are you've used up a few already. And next time you hear someone freaking out about freeloaders, remind them we're all freeloading. Or share this video with them and I'll just tell them myself. Remember to subscribe to MatthewCook.com so you don't miss and can freeload the next episode. Or just buy a t-shirt and help me pay off my student loan. Mom! down the street.